Okay, so makcik, ya, baru nak tanya kenapa coach tak ada YouTube channel. I ada YouTube channel sebenarnya. My YouTube, I I've created that account since two years ago. <coughs> What's up? Okay, cool. So, you can hear my voice, yeah? Uh, okay, anyhow, um, I just nak briefly explain. Kepada mereka yang masuk dalam YouTube, this is my first time going live in YouTube channel. And the reason why I'm doing my live FAQ segment dalam YouTube channel is because all this why I bought Facebook. But Facebook is giving me problem di mana I can't go live in my Facebook anymore because they say I have a camera issue. As you can see, now I'm live. There's no camera issue at all. So, um, for those of you guys that first time participate or join in into my live uh, FAQ, I will tell you in advance first that um, in this live, in, at this time, at 11.30 a.m., I will do my FAQ segment, which is a frequently asked question. So if you have any question regarding about exercises or nutrition, feel free to drop your question below. It could be in Bahasa Melayu or even in English. You could be from Malaysia. You can be from anywhere of the world. So if you have any question, just drop your question below down there. I'm going to read it and answer it. At the same time, at the same time, I'm going live in my Instagram. Usually, how do I uh, coordinate my life is Instagram and Facebook. Like I mentioned earlier, Facebook is giving me problem now, so I'm using YouTube and Instagram. So I will be speaking to both of you all. I have question now in Instagram, and feel free to drop your question. Dada orang ada YouTube. Interesting. This is the first time I go to YouTube. Okay, so question dari pada Mar. Mar, maksudnya exercise yang perlu dilakukan. Contoh minggu pertama period mesti banyak laku main resistant training. Regardless, Mar, usually macam ni tau. Kebanyakan of my client, I treat her based on my client dulu lah. Kebanyakan my client, first week of um, period atau menses, dia orang tak work out. Dia orang kata cramp sangat atau dia orang rasa tak selesa. So, I clearly understand that. Tapi, tak ada memberitahu bahawa kalau you ada period hari pertama ke minggu pertama, this is your training. Uh, minggu kedua, this is training. Tak ada. I already showed you an example. Kepada mereka yang dah participate dalam my live workout, sebelum kita buat live buka during bulan puasa. Banyak orang tanya, so bulan puasa training macam mana ya? Ada beza tak training bulan puasa? Ada tak? Uh, you know, because puasa kita tak makan. I, and what did I reply? I kata like, we're going to train the same. What's the difference is the bulan puasa, which means we won't be able to makan because kita wajib berpuasa. So during the period tak makan, kita akan rasa lemah dan lesu. Itu saja. But training, it is still doable. The training intensity is still doable. Kalau tak percaya, kepada mereka yang dah follow kita punya live workout daripada 18 March or 19 March sampai sekarang, perbezaan workout sekarang lagi senang kan? Majority of you kata, eh, training sekarang dah macam intensity 5 dah. Sebelum ni 8. Like before this, we did the broad jump, then we did the jump squat, then we did the burpees. Benda tu, it was so difficult for everybody. Everybody will say like 8, intensity 8, intensity 9. But now it's like intensity 5, 45, like kenapa tiba-tiba bulan puasa lah, rasa lagi senang. Assalamualaikum Rizal, apa khabar? Selamat datang ke live live video saya. Dalam segmen ni saya akan membaca dan juga menjawab soalan. So, saya sambung eh. So, mesti you terfikir lah, eh kenapa tiba-tiba bulan puasa lagi senang? Bukan bulan puasa lagi senang. Basically, kita dah mengadaptasi pada bulan puasa. Training masih sama. We still doing the burpees, we still doing the broad jump, we still doing the plate swing, we still doing... Uh, weighted squat, we still have tempo, we have all of this. But it is much more easier compared to before. Why? Because kita masih buat continuously daripada bulan March sampai sekarang. So the body is so adjusted atau accustomed atau adapted kepada training tersebut. Another good example adapted kan? Kalau you all masih ingat, kali pertama you bawa kereta lah. This uh, mengadaptasi based on neuron and also uh, pergerakan lah. So kalau, kalau kali pertama, you tak payah guna bawa kereta lah. Kalau kali pertama, you berjoging lah. Kepada mereka yang tak pernah berjoging, if the first time you jog, you akan rasa, aduh, aku jog 10 minit pun rasa penat nak mampus. Macam mana orang buat marathon lah? I tak faham lah. Macam mana diorang buat? Macam mana diorang push us lah? Diorang punya badan ya? Macam mana diorang increase stamina? So the, those are the most common question orang tanya because you all just started. Bila you all just started, you ask all those questions like, oh, macam mana nak increase stamina? Macam mana nak lari tak sakit lutut? Like, if you just started, that is the most common question. And in this segment, the FAQ segment, we answer you the most common question. So, I sambung balik eh. So, kalau kali pertama you jog, you tak pernah berjog, katalah selama MCO you duduk rumah je, alasan you tak ada masa atau tak tahu nak buat apa, tak apa. Use that excuse. 
but you can still work out at home kan that's why i provided the free home workout semua semua orang akan participate dengan saya i even can work out with you guys i tadi tengok you all buat apa tau like we all do together so kalau petak, kali pertama you berjogging you akan rasa terseksa but if you do it continuously for a period of time eventually like ala 2 km aku tak rasa pun i can even run 5 km for warm up you know some people are so obsessed dengan lari setiap hari dia orang kena lari 5 km which is doable which is doable i dislike it but it, which is doable so kalau you selalu buat eventually you akan nampak progress and eventually you akan rasa tak macam workout that's why sebelum kita masuk bulan puasa the workout i did explain that okay this is the progress kita akan buat kita akan rasa penat gila lepas tu masa bulan puasa pada first week kita akan rasa susah following week rasa senang dan rasa normal which is everybody rasa normal semua orang dah kata rasa lagi senang is it amazing no nothing miracle nothing magical it shows that badan kita boleh mengadaptasi dengan whatever training we provide kalau kita continuously doing it So my biggest advice kepada mereka di luar sana, kalau you expect I nak follow a diet for 30 days, I nak follow training for 30 days, dah nampak apa? You akan nampak perubahan. But if you keep going, you akan nampak a bigger changes. But manusia, saya jugalah termasuk saya, kita tak nak buat long term, kita nak buat temporary je. Kita ni malas. Kita ni nak buat benda sikit tapi nak result besar atau banyak. Kita nak kerja sikit tapi nak gaji besar. Kita nak exercise sikit tapi nak drastic fat loss. Kita nak diet 30 hari tapi nak result macam orang diet satu tahun. Betul tak betul? So that's why you have to ask yourself again like, why am I doing this? Am I doing this because I'm expecting a drastic changes, a short term transformation? Or because I want to create a new habit? Repetitively, I bagi tahu in my life, I kata, The reason I nak you all participate, I tak expect you fat loss. I tak expect you to weight loss juga. I don't even expect you to get shredded, follow me. I didn't expect any of those. What I expect is you create a new habit. Switch on the live, you nak dengar, I cakap, you dengar. You nak tanya soalan, tanya. Even in the live workout, tak perlu bersenam pun kalau you tak takut bersenam. You just buka, you just tengok je. Tengok, okay, never mind. Tomorrow you datang balik. Tengok, that's it. So you create a new habit. A habit whereby all this while you tak suka bersenam, eventually you akan bersenam. I have numbers of followers kat dalam ni, ada yang tak pernah jumpa selama ni, tapi yang pernah tengok dalam Instagram je, have created a new habit. I know numbers of people yang I'm so familiar because every time I buka my life, dia ada kat dalam tu. Dia ada kat dalam tu. That shows that they created a new habit tau, which is diorang participate. I still remember masa mula-mula datang, diorang ada, lepas tu tak ada. Ada, tak ada. Sekarang, every day diorang ada. So that shows they created a new habit. So this is what I want you all to do. Create a new habit. Jangan expect kalau join my life or you see a drastic changes in terms of fat loss. If you do, if you jaga makan, congratulations, you will see the changes. Kalau you setakat macam like, I nak participate tapi I nak enjoy makan, it's okay, it's still fine. Janji, you create a new habit. So anyhow, that is my um, answer kepada you. Tadi siapa tanya soalan tu? <laughs> um, Mar, that's my answer towards you. Tak ada special training masa you ada period. Tak ada special training atau uh, different kind of training masa bulan puasa. Tak ada. You can still work out the same way. Cuma you won't be able to perform as how you used to masa bukan bulan puasa. In the beginning. But after that, once your body dah adjust, you boleh perform dah. Not a problem. Okay. M. Razak. Ya, yeah, betul. Nak diet satu hari, terus expect ada six pack. Ha, ha, ha. Betul. <laughs> exactly. Kan. By the way, hari ini is uh, Maulid Rasul. Uh, it's cuti. I know banyak orang duduk kat rumah kot. Uh, or some of you keluar jalan-jalan untuk beli barang kot. But please do respect that uh, we still have this pandemic which is the corona. Uh, make sure you always have your distance between one person to another person because kita nak maintain all this A pandemic tak bertambah because I want to work as normal. I want to train my client on a daily basis, hours to hours. And as I mentioned, in dalam dari bulan March that MCO akan extend sampai lepas raya. So tada, dah extend sampai bulan Jun, sembilan hari bulan. So imagine, I nak tanya you guys ya. Imagine if you already know that going to happen, what would you do? Cepat fikir tak? Itu fikir tak? Oh. Macam mana coach tahu like, uh, kita tahu because kita ada orang dalam. Cik, wah ada orang dalam. Orang dalam yang memberitahu kita that uh, this thing will go on for how many days and it will be extended. 
kalau aku cerita tahu kenapa tak bagi tahu awal-awal I dah bagi tahu awal-awal Then, kenapa dia orang tak bagi tahu awal-awal so dia orang tak nak takutkan you guys macam how Singapore did it like hey you all kena duduk rumah sampai bulan Julai like, oh shit you rasa struggle gila kan so they do every two weeks and four weeks so this four week is a final one after that everything will go back to normal for most business not all business for most business anyhow um apa yang nak kongsi kat sini is imagine if you already know these things going to happen what would you do in terms of business because kita dah tahu apa apa yang akan berlaku we've so prepared bermaksud uh, cash flow dalam bank ada uh, we know what to do so we dah prepare tapi kepada mereka yang macam like oh tak prepare they will feel uh, it could be a very difficult so i nak relate benda ni dengan health tau. i nak relate benda ni dengan health the preparation dengan health so kalau you tahu This is how I convert into health. Eh? So, kalau you tahu apa yang awak buat sekarang, makan tak sihat, makan nonsense food, akan membuat awak tak sihat, why do you still keep going? If you are well prepared of your own action, kalau you tak control, you punya makan ni jadi tak sihat, kenapa you tak ubah cara pemakanan itu? So, mata lama kita kat Profizik is nak membantu you dari segi mengubah lifestyle you and habit you. Itu saja. Yeah, you don't need to hire us, you don't need to sign up with us. Instead, you need to get inspired by our clients yang sama macam you all, yang mempunyai penyakit ke, ada masalah masa ke, masalah kesihatan ke. Dia orang boleh ubah disebabkan they put their own effort to change their lifestyle. So, you are similar like all of them. So, cuba ubah lifestyle you dari segi pemakanan dan juga senaman. So, if you know things in advance, why don't you do something about it? Betul tak? Anyhow, itu yang nak kongsi. Uh, kepada mereka yang mempunyai soalan mengenai pemakanan atau senaman, drop your question below. In this segment, I will read as many questions as I can and answer them. And also in fa- uh, YouTube, um, I can't see your name, but I know you're there. Uh, if you have any question regarding about exercises or nutrition, drop your question. It could be in English or even in Bahasa. Okay, next question daripada Syed. Coach, saturated fat, trans fat, polyunsaturated, monosaturated, apa perbezaan dan kegunaan? So, di ini, in a simplest term, kita boleh kata lemak baik dengan lemak memang tak baik langsung. So, trans fat lah, lemak yang memang tak baik. Ada tak itu diskusi trans fat? Trans fat, trans fat, saturated fat. Okay, trans fat. So, I just explain trans fat, paling senang lah. So, trans fat ni adalah lemak yang dibuat. Uh, trans fat diletakkan dalam makanan berproses. Seperti cookies, biskut, ice cream. Uh, selain daripada ia membuat lemak-lemak itu lagi padat, lagi padat uh, dan berat, ia juga membantu untuk buat, membuat makanan itu tahan dengan lebih lama. Walau bagaimanapun, it is so, so, so unhealthy. So, it is so unhealthy to an extent, ya. Ia memang tak sihat ke, sehingga ke tahap, I'm, I'm going to put aside, boleh dapat penyakit uh, kolesterol, I'm going to put all that aside. Instead, I'm going to use this. It is so unhealthy di mana setengah country uh, seperti Singapura dah ban trans fat. Bermaksud, whatever product you beli dekat supermarket, kalau you tengok kat belakang, dia ada tulis kandungan kan, in nutrition fat. Um, fat, 10 gram, dan dia akan ada breakdown uh, 10 gram of fat, datang daripada saturated fat, monosaturated fat, whatever lah ada breakdown kan. So, kalau, in, this is in Singapore, eh, kalau ia melebihi, I can't remember the number but I'm just going to throw the number, ia melebihi 20 gram of trans fat in a product, dia orang akan remove that product from the shelf. So that is how critical the content of trans fat and Singapore knows it. I think other country macam Australia and can't remember lah but there's numbers of country that ban food product, processed product yang mengandungi trans fat melebihi certain number because they know Whatever product yang ada trans fat memang tak sihat langsung. But in Malaysia, we know. But what do we care? Sedap, makan je lah kan. So, I'm going to start with trans fat first. And uh, selain daripada itu juga, uh, dalam produk-produk lain, walaupun diorang ada trans fat yang sangat rendah, tapi diorang mencampur aduk dengan lemak yang lain supaya produk tu akan menjadi lagi berat, lagi sedap, lagi padat. So, again, I'm not going to explain how it breaks down, how the structure breaks down, what are the molecule structure. Instead, I nak bagi secara dasar je lah. Kenapa all these commercial company, commercial product yang macam, I give you an example eh, you pernah beli peanut butter kan, and you're one of my client, you know the difference of peanut butter. 
So I only advise kepada my clients to consume Pig's peanut butter and also Adam's peanut butter. Kenapa? Because it is pure nuts, pure kacang yang dikisar menjadi butter. So that's why, okay, I got the peanut butter. Sekejap, give me one second. Okay, so I got a sample here. So I always advise kepada mereka di luar sana is to buy pig's peanut butter and also Adam's peanut butter. Kenapa? Bukan sebab dia mahal, I suruh you beli. Tak ada kena-kena langsung. Kalau you all beli organic pun, dia tulis organic tapi kat belakang konten dia ada um, apa hydrogenated oil pun tak ada guna langsung. What is hydrogenated oil? Sekejap, I explain sekejap lagi. So kenapa I always advise people buy pig's peanut butter atau Adam's peanut butter it is because you imagine this ya. Eh? Nak buat peanut butter ni, dia orang ambil kacang, ground nuts kan. Kacang, kacang panggal kan. Eh? I don't know, the ground nuts. Dia orang letak dalam this machine. Dia orang grind, 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 grind. Sampai dia jadi macam so pure, it became like a butter. So the texture is very oily tau. Dia ada minyak tau. Dia tak melekat tau. If I keep doing this, if I do this, oh, nanti tumpah. So anyway, texture. The texture there is very oily though. So the texture is very oily. So why it is oily? Because memang kacang oily. However, kalau you beli Peter Pan, you beli, give me some, Daisy, Lady's Choice, all this peanut butter, lagi murah, betul tak? Lagi murah. Have you ever think like, kenapa ada peanut butter yang natural mahal, tapi Peter Pan, um, Lady's Choice, Daisy is so cheap. Like, diorang besar sama. But why is it so cheap? Let me tell you why. Okay, dalam pig's peanut butter and Adam's peanut butter, there's a few more other, but these are the most common you really dapat. And uh, slightly cheaper because uh, I think they print in bulk lah. So, dalam konten dia, sini dia cuma guna uh, saturated oil. I mean, dia tak, tak guna. Dia memang tak guna. It's from the nuts itself. It has saturated oil, polysaturated and monosaturated. So, datang daripada sayur-sayuran. So, kekacang, Datang daripada kacang dan juga sayur-sayuran lah, macam olive, uh, avocado uh, and also nuts. Those are monosaturated and polysaturated oil tau. So it's still healthy. It is still healthy. So kat sini dia pun tunjuk the breakdown of trans fat. Zero. Because it's not made. Tidak dibuat langsung. Semua secara natural. So you can see at the back right? So you can see um, I don't know you can see or not but saturated, unsaturated, trans fat. So, there are other breakdown. So, it is actually compulsory. All product dalam dunia kena ada nutrition fat. They have to have that. So, at least you know what you consume. Tapi manusia tak suka baca sebab tak faham. So, dia akan tengok je. Pig's peanut butter smooth. Okay, freshly roasted. Okay, tulis really good. So, what? Tapi Peter Pan kat situ tulis no cholesterol. So, kita yang so obsessed dengan cholesterol, like, oh yeah, no cholesterol, so we don't buy because no cholesterol. Like, ladies and gentlemen, Cholesterol only wujud dalam benda hidup, iaitu benda yang berdarah, haiwan. So, when you consume chicken, fish, beef, fish, whatever living creature that has blood, it will have cholesterol. So, the reason why produk macam tu tulis cholesterol, free cholesterol is, dia tahu consumer bodoh. Consumer memang, memang tak tahu. So, orang just belilah, no cholesterol, okay, I'm going to buy this product because no cholesterol. Pig peanut butter ada cholesterol sebab dia tak tulis no cholesterol. So, consumer bodoh. I'm not saying you bodoh. I'm saying that they know, consumer doesn't know anything about nutrition. So, they have to put besar-besar supaya attract people's attention. Macam, you know, I think Peter Pan or what product yang kata uh, low fat, cholesterol free. Like, when I think about to like, siapa yang bodoh beli tu ya? Eh? Because kacang memang tak ada cholesterol. But kalau people beli, memang diorang tak tahu apa-apa tentang nutrition fact. That's why I always encourage people, guys, please read about nutrition. Understand about nutrition. Please read the content, the ingredient, and also nutrition fact. So anyway, I terlajak sikit daripada lemak-lemak tu. Um, what I can simplify, kan? Polysaturated, monosaturated, unsaturated is healthy fat. It comes from nuts, it comes from fish, it also comes from vegetable. It's still healthy. You have to avoid from trans fat, iaitu uh, lemak buatan. And also, I did mention hydrogenated oil, okay? okay? What is hydrogenated oil? This is a bonus information to you guys. So... I keep using commercial industry. So commercial industry is an industry di mana diorang nak jual benda in a mass. Jual benda banyak-banyak. That's why you tengok peanut butter dari Daisy, Peter Pan, Stevie, Jiffy, all these things. Diorang lagi murah disebabkan diorang tak guna banyak kacang. 
I give you an example. So this is Pix and Adams, and this is Stiffy or Jiffy or whatever product yang jual murah kan. So assumption, maybe diorang guna 300 gram kacang. They have to use 300 gram of nuts and they blend, grind until become butter. 300 gram of nuts. They use probably 50 gram of nuts. But wait, coach, how they use 50 gram of nuts? They have more content. They have similar content than peanuts butter. You want to know how? how? Okay, that's why when you turn behind and read at the ingredient, the ingredients you need to discuss are, oh, peanuts. Like the entire thing is just peanuts, like nothing else. So the entire thing is kacang, which is 300 gram. They kisah kisah, jadi one container. Again, assumption 300 gram. I don't know how much, but I'm just assuming. 300 gram, they will grind, jadi one container. Peter Pan, Stiffy, Jiffy, whatever, they use 50 gram. But how the hell they have the same amount? Because Kalau you baca ingredient, dia akan letak starch, dia akan letak benda ni, lepas tu dia akan letak uh, tepung, dia akan gula, dia akan also letak uh, apa tadi dia kata? What did I say just now? Oh my god! This is what happened when you pause the brain starts sekejap. I dah cakap tadi, I forgot. Uh, hydrogenated oil. So what the hell is hydrogenated oil? So hydrogenated oil is something that can code um, butter and water and other ingredient menjadi satu produk. Dia melekat menjadi satu produk. So that's why most processed product, commercial product will use hydrogenated oil. So hydrogenated oil is equivalent to trans fat juga. So my best advice is jangan beli barang murah dan juga jangan beli barang mahal. Doesn't assume barang mahal tu bagus. I'm not saying that. I'm saying that when you want to purchase a product, whatever product supplement product or even nutritional product belaja baca ingredient if you just think about product no cholesterol memang nuts tak ada cholesterol and you percaya clearly you do not understand what is the content you understand what is written that's why banyak orang kat luar sana always advise product ni bagus no cholesterol like you are repeating apa tu tulis like you know if you see online coaching banyak orang post up gambar peanut butter banyak-banyak Dia kata peanut butter yang bagus mana, peanut butter yang kata no fat, sorry, uh, low fat peanut butter, uh, no cholesterol peanut butter. I'm like, you just show how stupid you are. I'm going to stay there up front. Eh. They have just shown how stupid they are because you're not to enjoy peanut butter yang bagus mana, peanut butter yang ni, no cholesterol. Like, you just clearly showed that you don't know. You just showed because it is low calorie. So, itu saja dah men- membezakan seseorang yang faham dengan seseorang yang tak faham langsung. So, they are the people that tak faham tentang nutrisi pemakanan. You only faham one thing, calorie saja. So, tengok melanjutkan. So, my advice regarding about the fat is you can still consume any food that contains polysaturated, monosaturated, um, unsaturated. So, saturated fat also come from makanan, macam daging, ayam, ikan semua. And there are debates. This is zaman Atkins. Zaman Atkins is before millennium, eh? 1998, 95. So before Zaman Millennium, Atkins was debating that no, you can have a lot of meat, you can have a lot of this. The cholesterol in meat is still healthy because it's natural. Then orang debate dengan dia, the USDA people debate dengan dia, kata, oh, it's not good to eat a lot of meat because it contains saturated fat, which is very true. Which is very true. Uh, Atkins punya approach, I agree and disagree. I agree and disagree. Eh? So Atkins punya approach is you can eat as much meat as you want uh, because it's natural. It is better than consuming too much carbs. And the USDA pula kata it's not good to eat too much meat because it contains saturated fat. It's not good for your heart because cholesterol tampo tinggi. Betul. Wala bagaimanapun. So this is going to be a bit technical. Eh? Wala bagaimanapun. When you consume a lot of meat that is organic, which not all of us going to buy, even saya pun tak mampu nak beli organic chicken and beef, it is way healthier compared to makan ayam dan daging yang mempunyai hormones kat dalam. So it's not the meat yang buat tak sihat because of saturated. It is because the hormone dekat dalam meat tersebut. So if you want to eat a lot of meat, can you have to eat organic meat, organic chicken. Um, Atkins punya approach, you can eat whatever meat you want. Uh, apa dia? Bacon, whatever. Janji is high in fat, low to no carbs. That's why I say I agree and disagree. Because Zaman Atkins is just more on low carbs during the era 
carbs terlampau banyak, which is very true, carbs terlampau banyak, that's how America become obesity, America becomes the fattest nation in the world. So he was debating on that. But we fast forward to the recent studies that, yes, you can eat a lot of meat, however, your meat has to be organic because what is unhealthy is the hormone that is injected into the meat. Itu sebenarnya. So kalau you nak makan banyak meat, not a problem. Uh, even though it contains high saturated, unsaturated fat, it's still fine. Uh, but limit to the amount that you can consume. At the same time juga, if you're really, really afraid atau takut regarding about the fat content, go for organic meat. But you still can eat. You still can eat. I'm not saying tak boleh makan. You boleh makan. So that's my answer regarding about trans fat, saturated fat, unsaturated fat, poly and monosaturated fat. I simply, I simplify kan terus kepada produk instead of technical term. Why so many, so many butterfly today, coach? <laughs> different filter, different filter. Sengaja je use this filter. Uh, anyway, YouTube. Um, why they say about butterfly? I'm using filter in Instagram. So Instagram is fun because I can use filter. Like yesterday, I had the mascara, I had the mask. The day before that was also, I think, butterfly. So it's just fun. Sadly, Facebook had a filter. Insta uh, YouTube had a filter, but it's okay. It's still fine. Um, okay, next question. Coach, I want to ask, brown rice can convert to sugar like white, white rice? Of course. Everything. Brown rice, white rice, oats, spaghetti. Semua benda akan convert into sugar. Uh, technical term, kita orang panggil glucose. So, glucose is sugar. So, kalau you makan brown rice, you still convert into glucose. Kalau you consume white rice, it still convert into glucose. So, whatever you consume, white rice, brown rice, potato, fruits, still akan convert into glucose. Even though fruits is fructose, but bila kita masuk dalam badan, ia akan dipisahkan and ia akan separate kepada glucose. Alright, that was 32 minutes. We still have another 20, I would say 25 minutes lah because like I mentioned, my Instagram suka like end the video before satu jam. They just end automatically. So I have another like 25 minutes to go. If you have any question regarding about exercises or nutrition, drop your question below, yo. Actually, I should post this thing up. I mean, um, okay. Posting. Oh, banyak, eh? damn, I cannot post all of those. That sucks. Damn, <laughs> so many things. Oh, they only allowed 200 words in YouTube. ta -da. Okay, cool. If you're in YouTube, you don't have my Instagram, just go into my, there's one link there, Instagram. Uh, I'm trying to adjust the first time I think I'm going to YouTube. Eh? I think I'm going to stick with YouTube. The first name I'm going to stick with um, Facebook, because Facebook, not helping me at all, as in like the videos, it's not helping me. Next question, Samuel, what is today's workout? I don't know, I haven't designed yet. I will not design again. Because again, whatever program I design is based on how I feel. Um, I don't design based on periodization. I don't design because of, oh, this is the second week, this is what we should do, no. I have to take care of my health because kalau I train gila-gila and I fall sick or I injure myself macam hari tu, there's no more live video. Like the other day, I memang push myself. Like, remember I injured my wrist? Uh, I was pushing myself for the back and also tricep workout. Memang I sengaja push myself and that was before bulan puasa. So I push myself, then I injured on my wrist. So, but now it's better, but that doesn't mean I can just keep pushing like training really, really intense. So instead, I'm just going to train based on how I feel. Like yesterday, I did cardio because I feel tired. Day before that, I did cardio also because I'm, I'm alas not train too intense. So today, maybe we're going to do tempo for the legs or maybe we're going to do tempo for the chest. It depends. Tak tahu. Tak tahu. There's no plan. The live workout session is more on me uh, giving 
my time and effort kepada people to create new habit and to participate. Itu saja. That's the purpose of my, my life workout and also FAQ. The reason why I do FAQ juga because I know people got a lot of questions but um, they're unsure or they're confused. So that's why I open a live segment di mana you can ask any question, I will answer your question. So MCO will be extended to 9 of June. What's your plan? <laughs> Coach, do you think flat dumbbell chest press can target pole? Uh, yes, but not specifically. Yes, but not specifically. So you have to understand chest are the dual muscle. One is petro minor, second is petro major. Petro minor is very small. Petro minor is connected daripada you punya clavicle, daripada up here to down here, kat bawah ni lah. And it's also connected to your sternum bagian tengah of your your chest, the bone lah. So the movement can be done at a uh, flat press. However, elbow kena flare slightly out and the dumbbell should be up here. However, you can still also feel on your anterior shoulder. So to answer that, it's very technical. Yes, you can. But for some people, they orang akan rasa on the anterior shoulder. Anterior means the uh, front shoulder. So it's always best to perform upper chest with the incline bench. So you can focus more on your petro minor. But kalau you nak focus on the flat bench, if you want to focus on petro minor on a flat bench, it can be done, but your elbow has to flat out. So if flat too wide and you bring too high, it's on anterior shoulder. Technical, again, we cannot teach people verbally. I dah bagi tahu sejuta kali. That if you want me to teach you how to train verbally, it's not going to work. It's like me teaching you how to operate a person. Oh, uh, pastikan pisau tu 5 inci daripada jantar, uh, dada, kemudian 2 inci like, no, you can't do that. You can't do that. I can just explain macam tu saja. Oh, flat dumbbell chest press on a floor press. No, it's way easier. It's way, way easier. Floor press is much, much easier compared to uh, bench press because the movement, uh, the range of motion, they call it ROM. Range of motion here is too short. So when you perform the bench press, let's say you're leaning on the bench. Oh my god. So let's say there's a bench behind me. So when you do bench press, your elbow go further behind. So there's a lot of range of motion. You will not the lurus all the way back. So there's a lot of range of motion, so you stretches your chest. Floor press is under here. Why? Because there's a floor behind you. You turn. There's a floor. So the range of motion is very short. So you're not really stretching your chest, meaning you're not really tearing your chest. However, now it's MCO. You only have the floor, you only have the dumbbell, we only have what we have. So utilize what we have, regardless. Kalau you kata, tapi I nak chest tebal, like, hello, bersenam dah cukup dah, tak kisah nak tebal ke apa. I pun rasa I nak lari atas, you know, I nak lari atas bukit sebab, sebab I nak tengok, you know, uh, kucing or burung. Like, we all have ones, we all have, we all have the ones, but now we only need what we can. Kita ada banyak benda kita mahu, tapi apa yang ada kat rumah tu, kita guna apa yang kita mahu sajalah. That's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> like for me, I have a bench because I'm in the gym. So I'm, I'm using the bench. But if you don't have a bench, it's fine. It's not equivalent. It's not equal in the same. But it's a good start. Less than 20 minutes to go. So if you have any question regarding about exercises or nutrition, drop your question below. Also in Facebook, if you have any question, drop your question below. Do, 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 do. Can people from, did I say Facebook? Can people that play YouTube nampak, so not nampak, can listen to my voice? I can see when I speak something like the microphone ada naik, tapi it's not tinggi, so... Can you guys listen to my voice or not? Yeah, at least now we can jog outside, exactly. Can. Boleh aja. Boleh jogging. Actually, you can start doing outdoor workout. 
but I think they said they limit it can because they did mention like the PM mentioned yesterday. Uh, kalau raya boleh pergi tapi tak boleh melebihi 10 orang dalam rumah. So that's like a a group, a party lah. So I think we can do group training but not exceeding 10 people. <laughs> Betul tak? So bunyi macam tu lah. Like, kalau boleh beraya kat rumah orang, boleh ada 10 orang. Kenapa dekat dalam gym group training tak boleh ada 10 orang kan? Like what's the difference? Maybe because they only focus on the commercial gym yang gym besar-besar, they tak focus on the small private gym. So I found that part. Anyway, we're just gonna wait. We're just gonna wait. Penang today only know whether we can operate business or not. Oh, different eh? Penang different. I thought the PM announced like the entire Malaysia. Coach, apa kita perlu makan and how much for fast bulking? Oh, you nak jaw jawapan macam tu ke boleh? Oh, macam kita 20 orang eh? Oh, 20 orang satu rumah? Okay, maknanya saya salah dengar lah. So, kalau 20 orang satu rumah, maknanya memang dah boleh buat group training lah. Betul tak? Because we have PT, you have group training. Like, kejap lagi, I'm going to see my client dekat rumah dia. Dia kata, oh, coach, I really need to work out. But I can't go to your place. I'm like, why can't you go to my place? Because my dad not going to send me. I'm like, okay. So, I can pergi rumah dia lah kejap lagi, train dia. Penang already green zone. Well done, Penang. Well done. Because it's green zone. Ah, uh, okay. So, I nak jawab ni. Uh, Calvin. Okay, Calvin. Uh, you ask a very general question. But I know you're asking for a specific answer for you. But I can't answer specifically because personally, I don't know you, you I don't know your goal, I don't know your, your composition. But I know what you're asking for. You're asking, apa I kena makan supaya I cepat, big and sado. Unfortunately, dalam dunia ni tak ada benda yang cepat. So, we have numbers of ad athletes tak ada ni. I got one client, he's an athlete. Even dia pun dah experience, dah compete dan benar. Dia pun tak percaya fast bulking or fast result. It requires time, effort, consistency and discipline. But you, because you ask, fast bulking means you want to know what is the special ingredient that I eat, I can gain muscle fast. That's the definition for you, bulking. But the real definition of bulking is you put on mass, you put on size. That size can come in from fat and also muscle. That's the definition of bulking. You put on mass. Tapi you tanya can just put on muscle. For sure, because majority of people tanya macam ni, is I want to gain muscle fast, like big and masculine. What should I eat? Food. So how much should you eat? I don't know because I don't know your weight. I don't know what's your fat. I do not know your muscle. I do not know what's your goal. I do not know your training routine. I do not know your lifestyle. So as you can see, there's so many reasons that can complement to your result. But to answer your question, you just need to eat more. When you eat more, you can gain more. That's my answer. Then your next question will be like, what should I eat more so I can gain more muscle? I would say food. A proper healthy food. <laughs> Betul tak? So anyway, that's, what, that's my answer to you. Makan banyak. Tapi sehat. We have less than 15 minutes. So if you have any question regarding about exercises or nutrition, drop your question below. Not a problem, bro. Not a problem. So yeah, kepada mereka yang nak beli peanut butter, you can go for Pix peanut butter and also Adam peanut butter. No, I'm not endorsing this product. I'm consuming this product. My client and I, we've been consuming this since, I don't know, forever ago. So, harga dia is about 18 ringgit, 19 ringgit. Kalau you beli Stiffy, Chiffy semua, about 10 ringgit, 12 ringgit. It is way cheaper. But you know what you buy. You beli tepung, you beli gula, you beli uh, hydrogenated oil, you beli benda-benda yang murah, you know, that's why you buy yang murah. Because barang semua murah. Okay. Ask dia. Coach, boleh bagi tips untuk pilih cheddar cheese? Mostly yang low fat, high sodium. Cheese sendiri dah memang ada fat tinggi. 
So kalau you kata nak cari cheese low fat means they go a certain kind of process. It's macam ni tau. Susu sendiri, the real susu, again manusia tak sepatutnya minum susu but it's, 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 sorry. Just assume that you masih nak minum susu juga walaupun ada kata manusia tak patut minum susu. Dalam susu itself dah memang ada lemak tau. Memang dah ada lemak. But manusia kata, I tak nak minum berlemak sebab takut gemuk. That's why the low fat milk started early 19s, 1990s. Pada awal tahun 1990-an. Because that was the era whereby penyakit kolesterol semua naik and people kata jangan makan benda berminyak. Instead makan banyak kapur. That's why the USDA kata a low fat diet, more carbs. So because of that, the demand is high. They want low fat product. They created a susu low fat. So susu low fat, they go through a process. They have homogenization, posturization, and they remove the fat. And when they remove the fat, the byproduct of removing the fat is what? Is what, guys? What's the process when they remove the fat? What happened? They create the cheese. So basically, cheese is a byproduct. So bila dia orang tak boleh jual cheese, dia buat apa? Kata, you know, guys, cheese is actually very good. Uh, cheese lagi lama lagi bagus. So dia orang akan cari benda untuk jual. So I'm telling you the truth. Eh? Dia sama macam ni tau. Zaman dulu, zaman dulu lah, zaman zaman dulu lah. Eh? Manusia cuma makan daging lembu, isi lembu, then maybe perut lembu, otak lembu tu, okay lah. Then tiba-tiba ada orang makan kaki lembu, ekor lembu, bontot lembu, leher lembu. Like they try to sell everything. Like we know we only eat daging lembu, daging ayam kan. Tiba-tiba dia nak jual semua benda. Even sekarang apa, ada Uncle Bob chicken, fried chicken. Even kulit ayam pun dia selalu tepung, dia boleh jual. You know like, tak ada siapa nak makan kulit ayam kan? Tak apa, kita buat bisnes, kita jual. Kulit ayam, selalu tepung and jual. Orang beli juga. So basically, in this current era, kita boleh jual apa-apa saja. There are demands. There are demands that people would buy. So daripada rugi, why not jual? So sama juga, cerita susu sebenarnya, manusia tak seperti minum susu. Tapi... During at that period of time, I can't remember which year they were just selling meat, 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 meat. Then after that, like, hey, instead of we jual daging lembu je, why not we jual susu lembu? Why not we jual susu lembu? At that period, juga tak ada posturization, homogenization, tak ada because Doctor Posha belum created posturization process. Sebenarnya posturization process is from this doctor called Doctor Posha. He created that process for alcohol. Tak ada kena mengena susu, tak ada kena mengena langsung. It wasn't designed for that. But people dah mula jual daging lembu semua dan eh, you know what, lembu ada susu, why not we jual susu? So, dia mula-mula jual susu saja, raw milk. And bila jual raw milk, semua orang boleh buat. Siapa-siapa ada lembu, memang boleh jual susu. So, they cannot um, do that as uh, a commercial product. Dia orang tak boleh buat commercial tau. Dia orang tak boleh jual commercially. Macam tak boleh ada satu organisasi menjual satu susu saja. Semua orang boleh jual. So, dia orang buat macam ni lah. Oh, you tak boleh minum susu macam tu sebab nanti you dapat food poisoning. So, you kena beli produk yang commercialized yang memang dah di, ada dalam kotak semua. So, that's why lah dia orang tak bagi orang jual susu uh, natural. Dia kena beli susu daripada company-company tersebut. So, the selling point, kalau nak beli dari company tersebut, kenapa boleh beli daripada dia orang? Because they have the process called posturization and homogenization. So, orang kata, okay, if you buy a product that is commercial, mean is it healthy because they have all this process. So, we buy that product. So that's why there's only one company or two big company yang monopoly, monopoly susu dalam dunia. Because they are the one that supply this thing. So anyhow, lepas dia membahas susu-susu, dia tengok, okay, now it's like awal tahun 19 something something, uh, penyakit uh, kolesterol, penyakit jantung makin teruk and the demand now is low fat. So we should do our milk low fat because dalam susu ada fat kan? So we're going to do another process for the susu. So they remove the fat. But when you remove the fat, the susu tastes like shit. So what do they do? They add more sugar. Not just that, they add strawberry, they add chocolate, they add vanilla. I don't know what other flavor. Sebab you takkan nampak lembu warna pink, you takkan nampak lembak, lembu warna coklat. Tak ada lembu strawberry, tak ada lembu coklat. Memang tak wujud langsung. Tapi diorang letak kat dalam, diorang pagi fortify. And when they do go through this process, we call it posturization and homogenization, they kill a lot of nutrients and vitamins kat dalam. So, kalau you tengok kotak tu, diorang akan tulis, 45. 45 maksudnya ditambah. So, dia orang terpaksa lah tambah vitamin A, vitamin D, vitamin E, whatever vitamin dia letak supaya menunjukkan produk tu sebenarnya bagus. Tapi sebenarnya produk tu is just lactose. Gula daripada susu, lactose. But kalau minum memang tak sedap. Tak ada siapa suka minum susu natural kan? Tak ada siapa. Semua orang benci. Even I pun benci. So, dia orang terpaksa buat flavoured milk. But if they don't do flavoured milk, they have to add sugar. Okay, fine. They remove the fat, low fat milk, but with high sugar. So, kalau you tengok konten susu you minum sekarang kan, 
gula dia hampir sama dengan Coca-Cola. Or maybe half of the amount of Coca-Cola. So kalau you kata, oh I tak nak minum Coca-Cola sebab gula tinggi. But you minum susu, like clearly you don't know what you are doing. Clearly you baca je ingredient kat depan. Macam yang kata kan, semua orang cuma cakap this is low, no cholesterol peanut butter, it's good. Like why are you repeating apa yang tulis kat depan? Clearly nak standard cholesterol. So you just repeating apa yang you boleh baca, you tak faham. Sama juga, kenapa orang minum susu sebab dia orang tak faham. Because dia orang tak faham, dia just minum susu sebab situ tulis low fat milk like susu memang kena ada lemak. Tapi kalau dia remove the lemak, lemak. so they go so many process, dia tambah gula. Tapi dia kata tak nak minum Coca-Cola tapi minum susu like lebih baik minum Coca-Cola. Betul tak? So that's when I, that's when I, when I discuss dengan orang kata eh susu bagus untuk tulang. I'm like why do you say susu bagus untuk tulang? Oh because calcium tinggi. Ah, uh, That is what commercial people wants you to know. You need to drink milk for, for tulang. Tak ada kena-kena langsung. Tak ada. Zaman dulu lagi, daripada zaman dulu lagi, susu are not meant for tulang. Memang tak tak pernah wujud tau. It's not based on research, susu bagus, tinggi, calcium like. Based on research, bro- broccoli, spinach, kale, whatever sayur tinggi, which is green color and leafy, is contains much more calcium daripada susu. Kenapa tak makan sayur? Oh, tapi sayur tak sedap. There you go. So, basically nak minum sebab sedap je lah kan. So, sorry lah terlajak sikit. Because you tanya nak cheese that is low fat. Naturally, cheese memang ada fat. But kalau you kata no fat, they're going to go a further process. Which means, you tak nak benda yang sihat. Sama macam susu lah. Like, I tak nak minum susu natural sebab tak sedap. That's why I minum susu strawberry lah. Like, you tak nak benda yang sihat lah. Itu je, I can simplify. I'm being general, not for you. Secara general. Because banyak sangat orang masih tak faham kenapa dia ambil satu benda. Like, when you want to do something, you need to understand why are you doing it. Let me give you an example, eh. Yeah. You kena makan brown rice. Like, kenapa kena makan brown rice? You kena makan brown rice. So, kalau I tak explain kat you, what is the benefit of brown rice? Or why you should consume brown rice? You're like, kenapa aku nak makan brown rice? Bebe, makan white rice lagi sedap. Uh, exactly. That's why you choose white rice, but lagi sedap, kan? So, kalau you faham kebaikan brown rice, I'm just giving an example. Then you're like, oh, I should eat more brown rice because it's healthier. But it's not as nice as the white rice. Of course, it's not as nice, but it is healthier. Itu je. So, macam susu juga. Kenapa you nak minum susu? Oh, because tinggi kalsium. No, that is the selling point. And tak tinggi kalsium pun, makan sayur lagi tinggi kalsium. They want you to percaya that susu tinggi kalsium. Itu sebenarnya. Rasa tipu tak? So, itulah sebenarnya commercial industry. They have to tell you what you want to hear. They don't tell you the truth. They tell you what you want to hear. First, they have to create a problem. Di mana kata, wanita umur, melebihi umur 40 tahun, Uh, dapat masalah tulang yang berapa? Osteoporosis. Bagaimana anda ingin mengurangkan masalah ini, anda perlu mengambil kalsium, makanan yang tinggi kalsium. Susu, adlin and marigold membantu dengan consumption kalsium anda. Berilah susu marigold hari ini. Mempunyai flavor yang sedap dan juga rendah lemak. Like, oh okay, it's rendah lemak, it's bagus untuk tulang. Aku nak belilah ada promo. So, you buy lah. Tapi tak faham kenapa you beli. You believe sebab commercial industry wants you to believe that. So, it's not wrong. Kalau you kata I believe sebab sedap, then it's your choice. Kalau you kata I believe sebab dia sihat, rubbish. Rubbish. Samuel, as human, we create a lot of different food, but sadly, we don't know how to choose the food that's suitable for our body. It's not we don't know. It's not we don't know. It's more on like, Uh, we need to be aware and conscious on our buying. So, just assuming this, uh, katalah, you know, our parents give us money. Uh, when they give us money, zaman dulu, zaman dulu, masa kecil kecil uh, Parents give us money like, okay, um, Iwan or Samyo or Ideal, okay, Mama bagi lima ringgit. So, lima ringgit ni, duit untuk beli makanan dan minuman je. Jangan beli benda lain. So, like, ah, uh, consciously you're aware, okay, Mama, Papa bagi duit untuk beli makanan je. Jangan beli benda lain. So, Consciously, we are aware that that is the purpose. But, if let's say our parents like, nah, lima ringgit. You pun macam like, untuk apa, ah, beli apa-apa. When your parents say beli apa-apa, that's when everything goes haywire. You akan beli, uh, I nak kongsi satu cerita. <laughs> This is my history. Uh, masa I belajar sekolah agama, masa kecil-kecil kan. So, my mom bagi, uh, 20 ringgit, eh? 20 ringgit, 20 ringgit sebulan ke, 60 ringgit sebulan sekolah agama. Macam tu, I can't really remember. So small. So, Uh, my mom give me, my mom ke my dad give me money nak ni bayar untuk sekolah agama. Uh, selalunya dia kata macam tu, but one period ni dia kata, ambil duit tu. 
So maybe consciously she assumed that I understand. Again, I pun dah terlupa kan. Tapi I still remember. Mama kata lah, nah ni duit. So I assume that duit is for me to belanja. Nak pun ringgit ke dua ringgit. I took the money but I tak tahu untuk bayar sekolah agama. I memang nak pergi sekolah agama but my mom give me the money but she didn't say ni untuk sekolah agama. Macam tu lah. So I took the money. You know what I did? I pergi beli layang-layang. I beli beli coklat. I beli air kotak. I beli semua benda tu. Why? Because uh, she didn't say ni untuk sekolah agama. So they give us something but we are tak conscious this is for what. So we spend lah. Sama juga. What I'm trying to relate is dengan pemakanan. We have to be conscious of whatever we purchasing. Like I buy this for the sake of what? Sebab dia sedap ke? Sebab dia on offer ke? Sebab dia berhasiat. Majority people assume that whatever is written in front is berhasiat. They don't know what they're buying. They're just like, you know what? I, I'm a consumer. I don't know what I'm buying but it's stated here, no cholesterol, which means it's good. Memang you baca tu bunyi tu good to be true. Macam produk kat luar sana, you beli ni dapat turun 10 kilo lemak badan. You know, it's too good to be true because you don't understand. But when you understand, consciously you know what you are buying. Kepada muslimin, muslimat di luar sana, sebelum you beli produk, apa you akan tengok? Halal kan? You akan tengok benda tu kan? You tak akan just beli. Kalau you was-was, you tak akan beli, betul tak? So sama juga, bila you nak beli sesuatu, you kena tahu apa you beli. Kalau you tak tahu apa you beli, jangan beli. As simple as that. As simple as that. I'm using um, halal as an example. So kalau you tak tahu apa benda tu, ingredient dia, jangan beli. Simple. Almond milk. Acceptable. Uh, almond milk, there's so many brand out there and most almond milk, the real almond milk yang sihat, number one is mahal gila, lagi mahal daripada susu. Number two, memang tak sedap langsung. Kalau you minum susu almond yang sedap, bermaksud you minum susu almond yang telah dicampur aduk. I only know one brand daripada Australia, they call it Blue Diamond. So Blue Diamond natural almond milk. So dia memang almond milk. Dia taste lemak. Uh, tak ada rasa tapi dia berlemak. Imagine macam you minum air tapi ada olive oil. Contohlah. But olive oil texture lain, almond uh, oil texture is different. But bayangkan dia macam air dengan oil tapi ada alah, if you buying that, you know lah. The texture is different. The taste is plain and tak sedap. But you buying milk from almond. So that's the only almond milk yang I tahu sihat. Blue diamond daripada Australia, almond milk. So kalau you beli chocolate almond milk, means you just nak flavor lah. Bebek tak beli. Bebek just minum air chocolate je. I know air chocolate tak sihat. But if you say for the sake of chocolate, you can make your own almond milk with cocoa powder. Again, depends what are you looking for. So I cannot always advise you, oh, you jangan beli ni, jangan beli ni. Consciously, you need to know. You beli sebab apa dulu. You kena beli sebab apa. Three more minutes to go. Okay, one more question and I shall end my life now. Alhamdulillah. Angin, angin. Bukan kenyang, angin. <laughs> you know I'm going to end it here because timer dah run. Lah. Okay, I would like to say thank you very much kepada anda semua yang tanya banyak soalan uh, in this FAQ segment. Again, from today until 9 of June, I will still keep doing my live for FAQ and also live workout segment to entertain, insyaAllah, no lah, to answer your question and also to accompany you Uh, during the workout. Kepada mereka yang mempunyai soalan mengenai pemakanan atau senama, you can DM me. You can DM me, no worries. I will read it when I have time. Or, uh, what I would suggest is, kejap lagi, go to the link in my bio. There's a link in my bio. Click the link in my bio for free consultation. Azizi will consult you dahulu. And if we, if he sees, or if we think that the program is suitable for you, then I will contact you after that. If the program is not suitable, Azizi will just give you an advice, kata apa you boleh buat sendiri, mungkin, Uh, you require more time or discipline or whatever you you can do yourself. But if we see that you have done everything and we can work along together, then I will consult you after that. How about peanut butter? That's I I have already explained about peanut butter. You can watch the replay after this, bro. I've explained like thoroughly about peanut butter. What's the content of peanut butter? You need to know. So anyhow, I would like to end my live here. I'll see you guys later at 6 p.m. for the live workout session and tomorrow at 11.30 a.m. for uh, FAQ segment again. So having said that, terima kasih banyak-banyak. Uh, have a good evening. Good afternoon. Uh, take care. Assalamualaikum. Peace out. See you later. All right, Facebook, uh, sorry, YouTube. Um, catch you guys. And feel free, to, feel free to go to my Instagram to have a look at my content inside. Take care. Yeah.
Peace out.